All right, we're back. This thing has been running for about two and a half hours. It is quite warm to the touch, maybe 40 Celsius or so, probably a bit more. The case is a bit small for the 13.2 watts I measured it drawing from the mains. However, it is not shut down yet, which probably means that the owner was seeing intermittent failure, but not a consistent rapid failure. So the caps in this one are probably dodgy and failing, but not already failed all the way, since it does manage to power up and it does seem to be stable when it's just sitting here. So I think the next step is to take off the case and have a look inside. You can tell this thing has been hot because when I tried to see how easy it was to take off the rubber foot, I pulled a bit and the glue suddenly came unstuck and this rubber is brittle. It just ripped all the way across like that. Which means that it's going to be a pain getting the rest of this bottom off. I'm going to try to do it and have it come off okay. Yeah. But so much for getting everything off in one piece. This rubber is really brittle and the glue is just wrecked. So this is going to be fun. Well, save you the trouble of me wrestling with a rubber foot. <laughs> well, I've opened it up as carefully as I could, even though the result is still the base in two large pieces and one small piece, and the glue just wrecked. And so, here's the guts. Have a full-size standard hard drive with a serial ATA connector to the motherboard. We have the power supply. This is where the actual problem is. And over here, way to go, Apple. It is a fan that goes from nowhere to nowhere and only turns on when this thing overheats which usually with Apple products is never, in Apple's opinion. And thus, this thing is a thermal design nightmare. So, I think the next step would be to pop out the power supply here and just overall have a look at it. So, I'm going to go about doing that and get back once I have the power supply out and possibly opened. Well, I've opened up the power supply as careful as I can, except for the fact that the now cooked plastic is very, very brittle, so the slightest touch, even with a nice sharp knife, it all crumbled into tiny little bits and pieces, so I'll have to find some other way of wrapping it back up when I put it back together. So, here's the power supply. Mains input here, mains input filtering, some MOV, some big capacitors, few chokes, then tiny bridge rectifier here, twin 400 volt 39 microfarad filter capacitors, then we have the switching transistors here on the tiny little aluminum bar heatsink. Main transformer. Then output rectifiers here and here. Output filter capacitors there. Output filter chokes. More filter and regulation capacitors. And then the outputs. That's all there is to this thing. There are no obvious signs of failure. The black caps here look maybe a tiny bit bulged, but not badly, and there's no leakage. But 
It's still, according to the symptoms, it's still intermittent. So this thing could probably benefit from a recapping. And I am going to do a modification to the fan, which I'll talk about next. Carefully pull this off to the side because the filter caps are still charged. Don't want to mess with that. And bring this over here and zoom out a little. All right, there is the actual time capsule. Now it has this fan here. It's a decent centrifugal fan, except there's no intake really at the bottom. There's just these tiny perforations. So the fan runs. All it really does when the case is on about like that, all it does is blow hot air from here, across here, and back again, and it can't really do anything. So, what I'm going to be doing is I will pull the fan off, cut a neat little intake hole on the bottom, and depending on whether I use the base plate, again, considering the state it's in, I'll put a hole in the base plate as well. So, when the fan runs, it sucks in cool air and forces it out the vent slot at the top of the enclosure. This also would not be too useful unless I connected the fan to probably the 5 volt line on the power supply, which will cause the fan to run continuously at low speed and keep the unit cool. Alright, that's about all I can do for now, except maybe test the fan on a 12 volt source to see what it does and guess upload this and tomorrow get on with the actual testing the power supply no actually never mind I'll, I'll make another video of testing the actual voltage on the power supply later so that's all for now thanks for watching